welcome, welcome to the excellent podcast. I am your cinematic host, Stefan Whitaker, the ex or the damn, I forget the, the how my intro goes. The head honcho of SW Films. And today we have a very, very special guest here on the podcast. Uh, an old friend and client of mine from back in 2018. And uh, wow, she has done some incredible, some amazing, some monumental, some phenomenal things uh, in the fitness industry and just the just in the in, in like a therapeutic sense, just in all types of, you know, how what you encompass in terms of just, um, you know, what it's like to 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 go for your dreams and keep going. And, and I've been loving the stuff that I've been seeing from uh, Leah Love here on the podcast today. I'm super happy to have you on the podcast, Leah. Thank you so much for being here. Um, how are you doing today, first and foremost? Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm great. I'm feeling good, and um, I'm excited to be here. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, too. Um, yes, once again, just thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, I want to go back into, you know, kind of telling the audience uh, just a little bit how I met you. And how we met each yeah. other. Um, I want to say it was tw- it was 2018 for sure, yeah. like early 2018. There was a there was a cooking show that I think that I was like somewhat a part of at a certain point in the beginning, yeah. and we were filming. I don't remember exactly like maybe what this scenario was we were filming, but it was a bunch of uh, amazing and beautiful black women all in one room. It was you. It was, uh, I forget some of the people's names, Michelle Chambers, uh, a few other folks were yeah. all there. Conversation was happening. And mm-hmm. um, I remember you were there. And I think you had already had your business at the time, uh, Life Solutions Fitness, I believe. Yeah. So we kind of got into a separate conversation and talked about, you know, potential potential work. And then we clicked up. And uh, yeah, we ended up doing an awesome commercial in 2018. And yeah. that was really fun. Um, still one of my favorite commercials I've done this year, or not done this year, but done entirely in my entirety of my commercial work. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, we we clicked up ever since then. And I think we've just, you know, even though we haven't worked with, together since that time, we've still stayed in mm-hmm. touch and still stayed, you know, kept an eye on what what we've been doing in our own in the individual um, industries and worlds and stuff like that. And you've mm-hmm. been doing a lot of amazing things. And uh, I definitely just want for yourself to introduce yourself to to my audience to anyone who's listening you know speak to your excellence let them know uh who Leia Love is okay well, thank you for the the introduction earlier yeah. and um all the positivity i really appreciate it yes um so who is Leia Love um you know through life we we always go through periods of self discovery right so my self-discovery and self-realization came when I realized that I wanted to start doing more of the things that I loved outside of health and fitness and wellness. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a big creative side of Leah that a lot of people don't really get yeah. to see. Um, I I love to write. I love creative writing. I love writing poetry. Mm-hmm. I also love to draw and paint. Um, a lot of people don't know that side of me because it's you know usually just more of the fitness side. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. so I really just, you know, had a conversation with myself and did a lot of self-reflecting because I'm always encouraging and empowering other people Mm -hmm. to go after their own goals, their own dreams. But, you know, I kind of realized that I wasn't really taking my own advice. So I just decided to kind of dive into that creative world head first. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's been, I think just from just from like seeing how you were marketing and running your business back in 2018 to where it's at now here in 2023. I mean, it definitely seems like a huge jump. And I can tell that, like you said, that you've had like a a creative, a creative like spark really that kind of like pushed a lot of these different kinds of ideas and different kinds of influences in how you market your stuff in the messages that you put out. And I think that's been very, you know, inspiring to see, you know, especially just, seeing from the beginning, like, you know, just the, the video that we did, you know, you mentioned a lot of stuff, how you started mm-hmm. into fitness. And I think that's what I want to delve into for my first question here is like, what yeah. really got you into fitness? Like what, what, I guess, how did you kind of start out in that space? And how did you, I guess, turn it into a, a business for you? 
Yeah. So, um, it started a long time ago, just my love for, for fitness and health and wellness and all of those things a long time ago, just being an athlete and just having that natural desire to, you know, want to learn and educate myself mm-hmm. on how I could be a better athlete, how I could be healthier, you know, what's going to help my performance, all those things, creating balance. Um, I was always interested in those things, but it wasn't until after college that I really started making it a huge part of my life in my lifestyle. Um, I would, um, I've been doing personal training since 2012, but it was always kind of like a hobby because I just loved working out with people and helping people, you know, give them advice on how to achieve their goals and things like that. So it's always been a part of my life, but I didn't really take it seriously until 2018 when I started my business. Um, really just the love and passion for just helping people become better, you know, being a former athlete, it was a lot of training and a lot of learning. And I took a lot of, um, a lot of my life has been spent in sports and, you know, learning certain skill sets. Um, so I really enjoyed kind of that transition piece and, um, taking it off of taking more of, um, that off of myself and yeah. using it to help of help other people. That's great. And you mentioned being a former athlete. Um, I, I know in the, in the life solutions fitness video, which I'm going to make sure to link down below for anyone who wants to check it on the <laughs> podcast or on YouTube, whatever you, uh, yeah. it was track and field, right? You ran track, I believe it was. Yeah. How yeah. I, I talk a little bit about that, how you, you know, were going into obviously, you know, going to Purdue and, and doing that. And just Mm kind of how that kind of transitioned, I guess, from being like, you know, having all these accolades as a track star and then kind of eventually maybe moving out of that space and into, you know, wanting to run it for something for your business. Like, how did that transition come to be? Mm, It was a tough transition. It was a tough transition just because you're used to doing something for so long. And then you're not doing it anymore. So for me personally, it was a big identity shift too. Um, I think it's not really talked about, but athletes really do. There's a huge like psychological factor in leaving your sport. And yeah. um, it really does affect your your mental health and your emotional health and like your self-worth and all of that. Um, so for me, that was the case, you know, not, mm-hmm. not being elite anymore, not you know, cause there's just so much training involved. There's so much of your identity tied into your sport. So stepping away from that, it's like, I kind of felt almost empty. Like, okay, like what am I going to yeah. do with my life? Like this was my yeah. life and now I'm not doing it anymore. Um, mm-hmm. so, but I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, but it was really important for me to still, um, kind of have that be a part of my life in some aspect. Yeah. For sure. Cause I mean, I, I imagine most folks who are, who are in the college sport and they're doing really well at it. They, there's mm-hmm. plans to like, obviously go pro with certain things, right? Like, right. Was that, was that like a, was that an aspiration for you at one point? I mean, I don't really know what the, well, yeah, I guess in just an Olympics, certain things like that, were those yeah. certain accolades and aspirations that you had um, before yeah. actually like, you know, stopping doing track and whatnot? It was absolutely. So, um, after college, I actually qualified for the 2012 London Olympic trials that was in Oregon. So I competed Uh there, didn't make it to the Olympics, but I was still, I believe top, I don't know, top 12 or top 10, something like that in um, the nation. Um, but I was still eager to make the Olympic team. So two years into my training um, is when I got injured and it was kind of that halfway point where I had to have that serious conversation with myself. Like, okay, (laughs) two, you have two more years. Is it, is it worth it? You know, you really have to, you know, weigh out all the options and the probabilities and things like that. And I just Mm -hmm. decided with the injury that I had with all the rehab, you know, time and in money, all of that, that I would just, (laughs) <laughs> yeah. you know put my put my spikes up and kind of move on yeah so then so you said obviously like you know you started training at 2012 um mm-hmm. and then eventually you know starting the business in 2018 I guess when when did it come to you that you were going to start a fitness business a fitness brand like you know like because I think everybody right always has a certain moment when they say you know what I'm actually going to do this <laughs> I want to make my money like this. I want to make, 
you know, an impact with this? Like, what was that moment for you? Was it maybe that mm. moment you stopping, you know, having to, like you said, hang the spikes up or was it, what did it take a little bit before you got to that moment? And what was the moment? I think it took, it took a few years just because I didn't, that wasn't the vision that I saw for myself. That wasn't really the path mm-hmm. that I saw for myself. Um, so it's just kind of like over time, all the pieces kind of started to fall into place and, yeah. you know, being encouraged by people. And, you know, also it was about for me, fulfilling a need, the, the mm-hmm. issues that I saw and the issues that I was hearing about were obviously there's so much information out there. People don't know what to do. People need guidance. Mm. You know, we're hearing and seeing all these things on the internet, but you know, a big percentage of them are not really, (laughs) is not really great information to follow. Um, so I, I really did have that kind of aha moment of having to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what I really want to do with my life. Do I want to continue like working in a corporate environment, which I was, you know, doing really well, climbing the corporate ladder, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or do I want to really go after my dreams and, you know, do something that really fulfills me as a person, which is helping other people. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I, I, that was going to be my next question too. Is like (laughs) there ever, was there ever in another interest in any other kind of field before fitness or was it always kind of in that I mean, of course, you said corporate as well. You know, we're in there, and obviously, that's one of the things to like help you, you know, stay afloat, pay for certain things, you know, and invest in like what you wanted to do. But was mm-hmm. there ever any other kind of interest that you may have had besides fitness or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, crazy enough, I don't think hardly anybody knows this about me, but I actually have a, a fashion degree. Um, mm. I have a fashion degree, wow. apparel and design technology, and then I have a minor minor in art and design and psychology. So, oh, wow. my yeah, <laughs> my plan was to be a fashion designer. Um, yeah. like after track, you know, after I was done competing professionally for a while, I wanted to go into the fashion industry. Mm-hmm. Um things like that or you know become an artist you know that yeah, whole yeah. dream uh, and those, so that those was, things can still happen you know those things like especially can. especially with what you're creating with your brand now like i think that i think that you can still be able to somehow weave that weave that in into, into your own brand and like make it work you know what i'm saying and i think i think that'd be really cool that's cool that's definitely a, a an awesome that's 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 good to know because like i think you know, I've always, I always ask people that because like for myself, like I, of course I'm a filmmaker, but you know, I've also released an album. I'm not a rapper. I'm not a musician, but you yeah. know, that just kind of came from like, uh, uh, somewhat of a hobby and just also like another, I guess another passion you could say, but not a passion mm-hmm. that I want to use it, do it for, as a business, you know? So there's, there's different kinds of things that, that people can have a passion for. And eventually, you know, yeah. if you don't get to that one thing that you may have wanted to do, it could be, there could be some w- random weird full circle moment that happens mm-hmm. you know, in life that brings you to that point. But okay. So, so in 2018, true. yeah, no, absolutely. And in, in 2018, Life mm-hmm. Solutions Fitness was the, the name of the brand at the time. Yes. Um, what, First of all, what was the what was the inspiration behind that name? And then what also made you eventually change it over to Life with Leah, which is the the brand now? Like what uh what what was the meaning for the names and what was also the meaning and reason for the transition of names for you? Yeah, so I feel like the name is the hardest part of anything, any business, any, any project, anything, right? Because it's so important. It is, you know, showing, describing your message to the world, right? It's a huge part of the identity of the brand or the project. So it took me a while. And, you know, I was at the point in my life, um, again, just like self-discovery and figuring out really like what I wanted to do and just focusing in on life and kind of like what that means and fulfilling my purpose. So, um, life solutions, fitness is, was the first, the original name of my business. Yeah. And, um, the life part was actually is an acronym. So it stands for living in fulfillment every day. Mm, but okay. yeah. yeah, that's, that's what the life, um, really means. But yeah. obviously as a brand, that's a very, very long <laughs> name. I, I still have the, I still have the shirt that I remember you giving me from after the shoot. I still have that. So <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So, 
how did how did the transition yeah. come then with um like with life solutions fitness to life with leah like what made you transition into i guess with the name change yeah. So as my business evolved and as I started to kind of grow and change into, you know, well, just change over time, um, I wanted my services to be more diverse. So at first it was just, I was offering just personal training. Um, mm-hmm. so that's where the, you know, life, the solutions, fitness, the solutions, meaning, you know, solving people's solutions to their problems. Um, and then the fitness and then, um, live with Leah a few years ago, I changed the name because, mm-hmm. um, I really wanted my brand to be more about some of the different facets of me as a person. Yeah. And, um, that is also, you know, wellness is huge for me. Um, I'm huge into wellness. Mm-hmm. I'm a certified health and wellness coach and then also, um, nutrition as well. And then, you know, yeah. I do some modeling on the side. That's cool. Yeah. Cause I, I think, and I think that makes a lot of sense just, you know, knowing the brand and seeing what I've been seeing as well. Like it's like showing more of your personality and who you are yeah. and like the, the purpose behind everything. I think that's very special, you know, and I think a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's cool because I think for fitness brands, there's some fitness brands that don't always do that. Right. And it makes a lot of sense for fitness brands to do that. Yeah. Um, especially when you build a bigger brand, like people have these huge, like YouTube and now TikTok followings and all this kind of stuff. Like it's all, it all yeah. kind of makes sense to be able to give a little bit of like who the person is that is giving all of this knowledge and information to, to folks. And I think that's um really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, to do all that. So for you then, like you said, you have all these different certifications with health and wellness, nutrition, um, mm-hmm. how do yourself, how do you, your, how do you yourself maintain a healthy lifestyle? Like, what's that like for you? Like what, what mm-hmm. kinds of things do you, I guess, practice that you preach usually, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I knew that question was coming in this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, I just want to start by saying, I think that we're all hard on ourselves. And I tell people all the time, like, be gentle, like give yourself more grace, but I'm not always the best at following my own advice. And I'll be completely (laughs) honest with that because I'm so hard on myself. I'm so hard on myself all the time. Um, And when it comes to being healthy, it's something that I do take pretty seriously Mm -hmm. um, just because I know that in order to be an example to others, it is important to lead by example. Um, So I really do try to um, be an inspiration for people um, because it's not easy. It's not easy to work out. It's not easy to eat healthy. It's not easy to be consistent, but if I'm not doing it and I'm telling people to do it every day, why would they want to listen to me? (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Makes sense. (laughs) I mean, you know, there has to be some sort of separation, um, you know, as a person who owns a health and wellness company, there has to be some sort of separation between normal and, you know, setting a standard. So Mm -hmm. I really do try to set a good standard for people. And I really do try to be um, inspiring for people to look up to. Absolutely. Definitely the hardest thing, eating healthy (laughs) is a hard thing to do. So like, like for me, right? Like I, I work out fairly often, but then when I'm working on these jobs, Like, Mm -hmm. for instance, I just worked these last through two days and I mean, Mm -hmm. long days, there's no way that I'm going to feel like wanting to go into the gym. Right. Um, And I had a friend over here who went to the gym and then I just had to do, I just did laundry. Like we, I wanted to go to the gym, (laughs) but it's like, so there's a lot of days where like, I'm like, okay, I want, I I really know I should be in there. But then I just Mm -hmm. like, in my mind, I'm like, damn, it's going to be packed in the gym. It's Mm going to be gonna be something going on and I'm just like I don't I don't feel like doing it and then I try to work out at home but then I like I live in a small studio so that's I have some space but not a whole lot of space and I don't know Mm -hmm. it's a lot right and then eating healthy that is definitely the hardest part I guess within your healthy lifestyle that you've had right and maybe it has Mm -hmm. came came naturally to you but like Mm -hmm. what is the most difficult part for you in that healthy lifestyle like, is it the eating healthy part? Is it the, is it the working out part? Like, what is it that made that you might find a little bit of difficulty on? Honestly, I think it's not, it's not the nutrition. It's not the working out. It's the sleep. 
It's getting yeah. enough sleep. And people that forget is... about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I forget about it all the time. <laughs> yes. We're just, we're so used to being alert. We're so used to having our attention on something, whether it's our phone or whether it's, you know, Netflix or whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, some sort of screen. We're so used to being preoccupied by something that sleep is kind of the last thing that we think about. Yeah. Um, so for me, I get up really early. I get up about 4.30 a.m. Um, every day. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wish I had the strength as you because that is that's <laughs> only time I ever do that is if I'm like if there's a job that requires it. But like, wow. requires it. yeah, wow. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And then just going to bed, just too Mm. late, just whether it's, it is like, okay, this is my time to like actually catch up on a show or catch up on reading or, you know, it kind of just takes me a while to wind down from a long day. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's something. Yeah. Definitely sleep is, is super important. And I think there's so many, there's like, I did a shoot one time. It was a master class uh, with this guy. I forget his name, but like, he's like a sleep professional. And it was just and really that. interesting hearing all of his uh, like just all of his information about why and how we can get good sleep, you mm-hmm. know, and like I don't I don't think I've ever tried any of his his solutions, but I definitely mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to, you know. Um, yeah. When you, so, OK, so kind of within this healthy lifestyle conversation we're happening, like, yeah, what what is it that you when you're, when you're working with a client or when you're just, you know, kind of marketing and branding yourself, I guess, like how, how much do you try to divvy up on terms of the importance of each of those different kind of, you know, facets in this life and in a healthy lifestyle? Like, what do you mm-hmm. find, what do you find clients are struggling with maybe the most that you've dealt mm-hmm. with? Um, definitely the nutrition component. Um, and sleep is big too. And then just the consistency with movement and, and working out intentionally, those three yeah, are definitely what I see for sure. What, okay. So with nutrition, um, well, I guess, first off, what is your favorite food to eat out <laughs> from, from, uh, from like a, from like a somewhat guilty pleasure situation, but also what is your favorite food to eat in like a nutritional, like, this is what I always will suggest for for anyone to have if they want to eat healthy and on a budget on a good budget you know that kind of thing yeah uh i okay i love i love seafood love Mm. it so like salmon shrimp um always a good go-to for me those are my favorites um Mm. and then guilty pleasure i love cupcakes (laughs) yeah (laughs) Can't go yes. wrong with a cupcake, can't they? <laughs> yeah, I more agree. frosting than cake, too. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Okay, so like with because nutrition is definitely a tough one. I think, you know, yeah. I think the, I think there's just not well, at least what I've kind of noticed. Some like I'll definitely try to get more. I've, I've been trying to get better at it, but a lot of stuff is just mm-hmm. super expensive sometimes. Yeah. You know, and then also I think usually the things that are like my go-to after like, like workouts, like there's something I do called, um, I call it conditioning week, which is something where I hike five miles for five days. And then within within those five days, I I have a whole workout regimen every single day. Yeah. Like also try to do like a good recovery, like with the Epsom salt or like an ice bath kind of situation. Um, And I'm trying to work my way up to do 10 miles every five days, which is kind of <laughs> insane when I think about it. Cause 10 miles every single day I've hiked 10 miles a few different times, like, you know, yeah. within my time hiking. Cause I, I really got big into hiking once I moved out here to California, but um, definitely it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, especially if you're doing a crazy trail, that's like, heavy heavy with the inclines and the declines and stuff like mm-hmm. that or or if you're you're hiking at a certain temperature you know it can be kind of tough but definitely i would always stick to like eating like grilled chicken rice broccoli that was like my thing for five days straight you know yeah. <laughs> like the variety the variety people don't know too much about i guess like um i guess for yourself right with the, within your healthy lifestyle like how mm-hmm. what is usually like your daily regimen in terms of your he- healthy lifestyle like what do you what do you do daily? Besides, like we started getting up at 4.30 a.m. What do we do from there? 
Um, so from there I start at five. So, okay. Getting up at four 30 and then it takes a good 30 minutes for me to get ready, um, do my morning stretches and just kind of say my prayers and, um, meditations, affirmations for the day. Um, just because I really have to get in a good mindset to start my day. That is a huge part of my, <laughs> of my yeah. ritual because, um, you know, people rely on, on my motivation and my energy you know, for their session. So I always have to make sure that I'm in a good space and, you know, I've got, Mm -hmm. I'm bringing good energy to the table for my clients. Um, so that's, that's a big part of my morning is just like, make sure my mindset's there and, you know, just be ready to go mentally. And then, um, I don't really eat, um, till noon. I kind of fast, um, So I eat at noon um, and then throughout the day, um, I just have clients throughout the day, personal training clients, coaching clients. Um, I'm looking at uh, fitness assessments that are sent in by clients, which is they have to turn in their um, their meals, like their food diaries and their check ins with their weight, things like Mm -hmm. that. Um, the progression I'm checking of emails. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Checking emails and then I eat at noon and then, you know, in between appointments, sometimes I'll like snack and then I eat dinner by about six or seven o'clock. And then that's yep. when I start to wind down for bed and mm-hmm. do that routine. Yeah. That's cool. And that's, yeah. does that, that, does that stay pretty consistent for you? Cause I know of course you do modeling and I know that you're traveling around a lot doing different gigs and yeah. stuff like <laughs> Did like yeah, uh, does that does your consistency kind of consistency kind of change up pretty often or, or has it been pretty pretty yeah. decent? It's pretty decent only because so much of my life is is this is virtual. Um yeah. So that really, I mean, it changes things before when I first started, I was, you know, going to people's homes, um, which I love to do, but now, um, about 90, I'd say 95% of my business is all virtual, um, which gives me more flexibility for my clients and for myself too. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, cause I, I imagine what, since COVID that probably may have changed a little bit in terms of the interaction you might would have with clients. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It changed uh, everything. How how difficult was that moment for you? I, it's crazy that because I've asked like usually every time I've interviewed people and I now I have to ask them, how was your time during COVID too? Like what was your business? <laughs> how was your business and your brand doing at that time? Like what what was that like for you during that time? I guess in terms of just how you were operating your business, mm-hmm. like the interaction you have with clients, like how was that for you? Yeah. COVID was crazy. Um, Fortunately, um, it was a time where a lot of people were coming to the realization that their health was needed to be at the forefront of their lives. Their health was really, you know, their greatest investment. A lot of people were making big changes when it came to their life and their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was, I was very, I was very busy, um, you know, Mm -hmm. during the time of COVID and the pandemic and things like that, just because, Um, There was just so much uncertainty at the time. Right. And I think a lot of people realize, okay, like I'm finally ready to put my health first. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. I I mean, especially with just all of the the ailments and certain things that if that COVID could really affect if you had it, you know, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think people definitely had to start taking uh, start taking more of an initiative with their health, you know, Um, and I think that this that I that that idea and that landscape of the virtual kind of you know interactions that a lot of fitness mm-hmm. brands have had um really skyrocketed you know what i mean just from yeah. just just in terms of like people just wanting to still stay fit and maybe not knowing what to do or what to eat or how to like get their health better and it's good that they had you know a person like you to help them out in those moments and stuff so that's good that you were staying busy as well you know Thanks. through all of that um for you then with everything that you've done with your business so far, what has been, I guess, the hardest part, or at least the most difficult part um, mm-hmm. in just growing and building your business at this point? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the hardest part is for a while I was trying to figure out, okay, like, how do I, how do I stand out? Because fit health and fitness, it's so saturated. There's so many people in the industry and, yeah. um, Um, not everyone, it's one of those things where not everyone in the industry is necessarily like, 
I don't want to say, I don't want to sound mean, but like qualified. They no, just, you're right. You're right. Definitely. They just, <laughs> Absolutely. They, just can, they can look good doing it, which is fine too, because I think, I think that's inspiration and motivational too. Mm-hmm. I think there's definitely a place for that. Um, but as far as, you know, what I do, I'm, I'm huge on educating my clients on, um, you know, more of the science-based aspects, like the nutrition and like, mm-hmm. you know, how, how much protein are you supposed to have? And, you know, what this is actually doing for your body when you get sleep and when you eat this. Yeah. Um, so competing against, um, competing against someone who maybe just, um, is like selling their body is really yeah. hard when you're genuinely just trying to educate people and help them learn what's right. best for them because, you know, sex sells. So yeah that's been, exactly. that's been tough honestly yeah yeah and I, and I think that's more on the rise as of lately you know what i mean <laughs> especially just with the pandemic i would say that was kind of a big yeah. thing the whole <laughs> the whole only fans boom like there's there's a, a bunch of that kind of stuff yeah. um with within that too within kind of the fitness industry um like obviously you're you're based in fort wayne indiana and i know fort wayne has mm-hmm. Fort Wayne, I don't, well, I guess maybe I don't really know. I know Fort Wayne has like somewhat of like a fitness industry, maybe. I know there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of like areas that I've kind of started to see is like, you know, gyms and certain kind of, you know, areas like that. There's like space. Like there's, there's a bit of like, there's a sports, there's, it's, it has a big sports, sports. presence. Sports, big absolutely. Sports presence, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess within the fitness industry, um, it's kind of jumping ahead in my questions here, but within the fitness industry within Fort Wayne, like what, mm-hmm. how, what it have, how, what is, what is that like? What is your, I guess, what is your, I guess your um, opinions or your kind of view of maybe how that is at the moment? Um, I think it's, it's getting better. Absolutely. Like you said, that there's more um, larger gyms popping up family owned gyms and, you know, some like cycling, like studios and Pilates and things like that. Um, some larger training facilities that are more diversified. Um, but to be honest with you, um, most of my clients are not local here. Um, that's something that's been yeah. so cool about what I do. Like I do have some clients in California that I train, yeah. you know, in the evening sometimes or a coach. Um, yeah. and I also tra- can travel, um, for work. Sometimes people will fly me out like to DC yeah. and New York and Miami. Um, wow. yeah. So that is, that's been, that's been so cool. You know, people, something I do love about social media is just the ability mm-hmm. to connect with people. Absolutely. From anywhere people see something that inspires them or motivates them and you know they send you an email or they fill out a contact form or they want to know more about you yeah Um, i really love yeah that of being able to kind of tell your story through like your videos and your pictures Mm -hmm. and just being able to connect with people from all around the world um that's something that i've really enjoyed but as far as um fort wing here i do think I do think it's growing. I mean, it's not the biggest mm-hmm. city, so mm-hmm. I don't think um, I don't think that's a huge focus here. But I think it's going in a good direction. Yeah, for sure. And I think you know, there's because I'm always interested. I know that I know how the industries are in terms of like you know the the film videography industry out there and like photography and and even the music world over in that area and like i love fort wayne it's not where i was born there i got family there so i look at it as home as well right Um, right. but i always have i always have i just always have a little bit of skepticism just sometimes because i'm like i'm (laughs) trying i'm hoping that there's good and positive growth happening in these in these Mm. areas over there and within the fitness space within the fitness space like i just i have never really i guess i've never just known um what that space is like like there's not too many other people i know that are doing what you're doing with your business and your brand out there um you know but i mean uh it's definitely good that you're like you know going kind of like worldwide nationwide with it you know and i think that's probably the obvious the goal right you want to be bigger than just this town in indiana this city in indiana so that's that's really awesome to to see you know really really awesome to see so yeah, the, I mean, it's important for me to be able mm-hmm. to um I think that's a big part of growth when you own a business is not being afraid yeah. to 
um, get outside of your little bubble, you know, and just getting yeah. out there and exploring and um, not being afraid to connect with people from all over. Absolutely. 1000%. I think that's, I think everyone should, should reach to that goal, you know, and I think that you're doing yeah. a great job with it. Um, first, before, before I get into chocolate affirmations, which I'm really excited to talk about, uh, yeah. one thing I've seen recently, you had, well, two things that I want to, want to talk about is yeah. you had a, um, it was a post I remember seeing you were like top 10 influencers, fitness influencers. And in, I don't, I forget, I don't know what the publication was, but I seen that and that was really, really dope. Congratulations. Talk, talk more about that because that, that mm -hmm. was really cool to see. And I think that's, uh, that's something that's super inspiring too, just to see that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, ah, uh, I feel like I'm finally at the point in my career where, uh, publications are starting to reach out to me and I'm getting nominated yeah. for these things. And Again, a lot of it is just yeah. just being seen and, you know, people are watching, brands are watching, companies are watching and um, it, it feels good. It feels good to be seen because I feel like it's yeah. just such a big pond, you know, big pool. Right. That's really, really cool. And then yeah. you had a public <laughs> speaking event too, right? I think I've seen that um, recently, a couple of different posts of just, you know, you giving out. Um, you know, some messages to folks at the event. Like, what was that? What was that event? And what, like, how, how was that for you too? Because public speaking, I think public speaking, especially when you know that you have some influence, you you know that, like that, you know, uh, that you have this impact that you can have with folks just in terms of your message and how you speak and the energy that you have. Like, I, I always think that's always a special thing for folks. Like I've had a couple moments like that too in my career. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, and like, what was that for you and what was that whole event for? Yeah, it was for the young, um, leadership program. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is a group of women called the links and, um, they have this young leadership program and they invited me to speak. So this, the people I was speaking to were the links themselves. And then mm -hmm. a group of sophomore students oh, at a high nice. school at a local high school. Yeah. So, um, yeah. they wanted me to speak about, you know, social media, being an entrepreneur, and then just, they wanted me to deliver an important message for them to take away. Yeah, that's cool. I know that had to be a cool moment for you too. Cause especially yeah. when you look at like, when you look at like younger, especially like when you're looking at younger folks, right. And like for you, yeah. young women who are maybe trying to look at what they want to do with their future and their lives, like, it may, yeah. Maybe in so sophomore year, like sometimes they might not be thinking about that, but it might give them a little bit of uh, just a little bit of forethought to 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 be aware of like the certain kinds of things that they might want to do and just the, the certain kinds of um, mm -hmm. the certain kinds of uh, just, I guess, energy they want and maybe want to be around. Because especially at that age, I remember when I was a sophomore, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're you can easily get pulled in by anything, you know, in terms of just yes. like being you know, just any kind of energy, you might not know whether it's good or bad. So, I mean, that's really cool just to, to have that opportunity to speak to, to young folks, you know what I mean? That's really cool. Thanks. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I think kids are so much smarter um, than people give them credit for. And I think it's an, important to be able to encourage the youth and, you know, they're our future. So let's, let's encourage them. Let's empower them. Let's give them a positive direction to go, yeah. go towards and, um, you know, make the world better. Absolutely. Who, who was that for you when you were getting into to, to fitness and starting your business? Like, did you, who was like the positive role models in your life? That's an excellent question. Um, positive role models for me in the fitness industry. In it, like in whatever it may be, it could be in the fitness industry. It could be a relative, whoever, whoever to you is like the, almost like the, 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 not like an idol, but someone that you really like, it, like you aspire to have the same kind of passion or energy as them, or did they just always showed you so much love and just, you know, taught you, uh, you know, things just in life that you still mm -hmm. use to this day, you know? Uh, I would say my, my family has honestly been the biggest supporter of me throughout my, my entire life. Um, mm -hmm. they've just always been there and they've never, they've never kind of questioned my passions. Right. So like mm -hmm. 
in my book, we'll get to this, I'm sure, but I talk about feeling like the world's trying to put you in a box. It wants you to be one thing when maybe you're meant to be something else or you're meant to do other things. Um, I just have always felt so felt so accepted by my family mm. and so supportive. And I think that like that's made a huge difference in it's helped me become the person that I am today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is there like, I guess going back to it, or is there anyone in the fitness space that you felt like was a, I want to say a role model, but some, somebody that you, that kind of inspired you? Yeah. When I first started out, um, I was doing group, uh, personal training sessions and then yeah. some individual training sessions. And I worked for, um, a guy whose name's Terry Collins yeah. and he owned a gym, him and his wife had owned a gym and, um, he used to train me when I was young. He was my like basketball coach when I was young. Oh, okay. And then years later, I, you know, worked for him as a trainer. And mm -hmm. that's kind of my first, that was kind of my, that was in 2012. Um, that was my first taste of like working with people in that type of yeah. setting, being a trainer, yeah. being a coach. And um, I just loved it. So he was very encouraging with that. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. All right, let's let's hop into chocolate affirmations. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I love that title. That's amazing. That's an amazing title for a book. And once again, like just when I remember that you when you posted about this on social media, I was like, oh, wow, that is that is hella awesome. That's hella cool. And it's great because like I think that was just one of those moments for you when, you know, when I've when I think about like my friends and, and past clients, whatever it may be. And I like pay attention to like what they do on their, with their business and their brands. And when mm -hmm. you see them kind of do something that's different, something that's once again, out of the box of maybe what people have put you in, like something that they maybe have not expected you to do. I right. always, I get, I get excited and I'm happy for my folks that do that because that kind of just shows like a real great evolution of not just their business or their brand, but their person in general too. Right. And mm -hmm. I think this was really cool to see because like, it's not every day that somebody is usually creating books or wanting to give a, a wealth of information and just like, you know, vulnerability too. Uh, yeah. to, and I want to talk about like <laughs> how and why did you create um, this book? What was the inspiration and just what, what is chocolate affirmations as a whole? Mm, yeah, thank you. Um, so again, I always try to do things that help me um, kind of like fill in those boxes. I I'm checking things off of my list and I'm trying to really create balance within myself as a person. Mm -hmm. So whether that's personal development, whether it's physical fitness, whether it's, you know, social connection, whatever, I'm always trying to trying to be a balanced person. Mm -hmm. just really trying to go after the things that I love. And, um, I will say, I feel like looking back and, you know, self-reflecting, I feel like I've done so many things in my life. And I'm like, I would, I'm never going to do that. I would never do that. Like <laughs> right. I have always yeah. told myself, Oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't have, I can't imagine ever having my own business. Like that's just, yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot of work. I, yeah. that's not me. I have, I have two businesses now and then same thing with the book like oh yeah. I can't imagine ever writing a book that's too much um right. but here I am so it was just a way for me to express my creativity and mm -hmm. you know get into writing again and um it was it actually started as kind of a personal journal so I was yeah. writing these things down I had all these mm -hmm. thoughts and I was really just kind of getting kind of sick of hearing certain messages um, personally to myself mm -hmm. and then also just messages and um, assumptions about black women as a whole. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's kind of where that idea of the, of chocolate affirmations originated. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's awesome. And, and I think just that's so, it's so special too, because like it's, it's, you kind of see the situation, um, with the whole, I'm sure you've heard about, about the Angel Reese, who, you know, from the yeah. LSU basketball, there's, there's all this kind of just, uh, you know, controversy about the whole Tony Yayo, John Cena face swipe thing that, you know, that has been going on. There's this weird double standard and you're just kind yeah. of seeing how mm. you're kind of seeing how people are 
reacting and treating this young black woman who is a champion, who's just someone who's competitive. And, you know, you know, you've been in sports and I've, I've played sports too, football and rugby back in the day. And, and like, mm-hmm. like that, those are just competitive natures. Right. And I think mm-hmm. outside of that, just what you're saying too, in terms of, um, you know, just like giving those, the positive affirmation to young black women who, mm-hmm. you know, you know, who, get kind of who get faced with certain kinds of um just weird mm-hmm. controversy and self self uh the self-conscious thing with themselves all the time right and say well, i think black people in general right but for you i think yeah. you putting out that message is super important too because um i mean i like for me i see it all the time when i look at like some of my cousins from like north carolina and i see certain things that they post and i'm like damn you know like there's there's yeah. There's this, there's this thing, of course, there's this a centuries, centuries long kind of trauma that we, that we've dealt with still to right. this day, you know, um, mm-hmm. for you then, like what, what was the, what was like, I guess the, what was like the, the biggest vulnerable moment for you? Like when you created this entire book, you said it started from a journal, right? And like mm-hmm. journaling, the journaling is always usually something that's like pretty vulnerable, right? It's a, it's, a, it's something mm-hmm. that's like usually only kind of sacred to just you because you might be the only person that's viewing the journal like mm-hmm. what, what what I guess how did you use your vulnerability vulnerability to be to create this book in a sense like what kind of I guess what kind of message or what kind of experience um mm-hmm. allowed you to to open up like that for this particular project I feel like it was my message to myself I knew I was kind of um, holding back. Um, Mm -hmm. I knew that I had more to offer as a person. But for some reason, there was so much fear. And that fear was failure. That fear was, you know, like, what if what if people judge me? That fear was just filled with so many different negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it, it was one of those situations where I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but like you're doing something in your life or you're at a certain place in your career and you just don't, you just don't feel like you're growing. And to me, Mm -hmm. feeling like you're not growing is like one of the worst things in the world, being stagnant, being complacent, just like feeling like you're not really going anywhere, anywhere, but you're meant for so much more. Um, That's Mm -hmm. kind of where I was in my life at the time. Um, So anytime I'm feeling like sad or, you know, a strong negative emotion, depressed, Mm -hmm. whatever. That's kind of when I turn to writing, which, um, is not always good because I feel like writing should be good for any time in your life. But that's for me um, when I turn to writing and journaling. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I did all of these different emotions and thoughts and feelings came out and I feel like just the most beautiful, vulnerable way, And I told my mom about it and she really encouraged me to, you know, like write a book because she, she told me that she felt like other, a lot of other women, specifically Mm. black women have probably felt a lot of the things I'm feeling and they could definitely, you know, be inspired and motivated by it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause, and I've definitely felt that. I feel like I've kind of felt that recently, like within the last year, you know, like I think, I've done a lot in my career, but like, it's so hard to kind of explain sometimes to to people who don't know how the film industry works because it's it's a very complex mm-hmm. and ridiculous ass industry, <laughs> and I love it. Sure. But it's there's so many there's so many pieces to it, you know. Like, mm-hmm. people have seen the different projects I've worked on, whether it's with you know Matrix, Shang Chi, Kendrick, whatever it may be. But yeah. those, I'm always usually certain positions on those shoots, you know, and. Um, sometimes when you're at a certain position, obviously you're getting paid a certain rate, you know, but also there's just like, there's, there's ways that people look at you when you're in those particular positions, you get treated a certain way sometimes. And Mm -hmm. I think really for me, what that was, was kind of last year when I had, when it was the five, fifth year anniversary of SW films and thinking to myself, like, okay, I run, I ran this for five years and there's a lot of things that I said I wanted to do with this company that I still have not done, even things that I wanted to do back home in Indiana, mm-hmm. right? And I think that used to kind of upset me a lot at that time, you know? Um, and then, you know, what kind of brought me back into, uh, I guess, just to why I do all of this in the first place 
is yeah. I found, um, I don't know if you've seen, I, I put out a, um, I launched a website uh, recently for SW Films. Um, and I put out this video called Don't Let the Don't Let That Kids Dreams Die. And I titled it that because way back when I was like 10 years old, I had like my first official camera and I recorded all this stuff. And I was 10 years old saying to my mom and my brother, my dad, saying, I, I'm gonna be in the movie business. I'm gonna be making all these movies. And I just remember watching that. And was just thinking like, wow, like that is like, it reminded me, like, I didn't realize that I said all that stuff at that time. And then even, even then, like, I remember I called my mom, maybe when I like, you know, probably a day after I'd found all that footage and watched it. And I just remember I was driving somewhere and I was just remember just kind of breaking down and crying to my mom because I was just like, mom, thank you for, for like you, like she knew what she was doing. My dad, they knew what they were doing when they gave me this camera, right? Like they, Mm -hmm. they kept giving me new cameras almost every few years. And I always had, there was always like a different, there was always a different iteration of like where I was at within the, you know, building this passion for filmmaking, Mm -hmm. you know, at that time. And it's it's always just the reminder for ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's there's like something that we always need sometimes, whether it's a nostalgic moment or whether it's just like Mm -hmm. really looking back in the past for um, just a remind, like knowing, like reminding, like what our purpose is and like why that we did it in the first place and the love that we have for those things. Like, you know, um, I still have, I, like, I, ha- I haven't I have read your book and I do want to buy it for my girlfriend. I want to give it to her because like, I told her about it too. And, uh, you know, she's a therapist and she's um, in the kind of space of health and wellness in a way. And like, yeah. I know that'd be great for her to read as well and, and, and everything. And, and like, I just think that that concept, everything that you're doing, chocolate affirmations is so important because there's a lot of people, especially folks back home in Fort Wayne, right? Like there's 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 probably some folks that you know, like black women, women in general who who are going through a lot of self-doubt, you know, because of maybe not reaching to a certain level or maybe mm-hmm. even as well, like the maybe that kind of that kind of societal hold they feel like maybe being in a place like Fort Wayne kind of at like brings to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that, that your book, like it's, it's, it's helping a lot. It's going to help a lot. I've seen all the messages that you put out on the, on the chocolate affirmations, Instagram page and stuff like that. And I, you know, I think that's really awesome uh, that you've been able to, to, to create something like this. How, how long was it? What was the process like for you creating this book? Oh, well, are you ready for this? Okay. (laughs) I'm ready. (laughs) So to be completely honest, when I, when I wrote this book, I was really going through it, like emotionally, mentally, I was going through a lot. lot. So Mm -hmm. I actually wrote the actual book. I journaled for two days straight, hardcore journaling for two days straight. And like everything you read in the book is two days worth of my thoughts. Yeah. Wow. So it was, it was wild. It was a crazy experience, but, um, two days to actually write the book and then mm. I'm self-published. So I worked with a publisher and, you know, they I created the book, put everything together. Mm. Um, I submitted my manuscript to them. Um, they edited it, all of that. Um, so that's kind of how the process went. That took about, yeah. about six months to be published. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's, is that's a process. Cause you know, I've, I've even thought about doing like an ebook situation, you know, on yeah. like a creative point. And, I, and I've, I have some things written up, but I just, it, it's sometimes a while for me to go back into it. Cause I'm writing, like I'm a writer as well. Like I write a lot of scripts. Yeah. I have a lot of scripts that I'm trying to write at the moment as well as the ebook, which is more something that I'm kind of, you know, pinpointing for something in the future, but you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot, right. Writing is, writing is a process, especially and I understood what you said when you said, uh, you know, sometimes when you really go through a hard moment, and that's when you put out all your your thoughts and your feelings. I feel like yeah. that's that's fairly natural. Right. Because, yeah. you know, for me, I feel like the moments that I've been the most sad or depressed or, you know, just have it like having a certain kind of feeling is when I've been mm-hmm. able to just pour out a whole lot of, you know, mm-hmm. thoughts and stuff like that. You know, and I think, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, journaling for two days straight, like. Yeah. That's I'm sure it's just a lot of a lot of just emotions, obviously, that had to go into that, because I mean, mm-hmm. within with I don't know how long the book is, but like I would imagine 
you spent most of those two days like really just digging in and just writing and just writing and just putting out every thoughts and emotion and just like the messages that you put in there. Imagine mm-hmm. that didn't take like a three hour thing for each two days. It might've took longer than three hours. Right. I would imagine for that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was intense. It was like, it was literally like nonstop writing. I would, you know, get up early all day. Right. Of course I was like, you know, had like movies and stuff playing in the background and then right, go right. To, I was going to bed at like two, three o'clock in the morning. And then it's just like, honestly, it was like, it just, it flowed. Like it came out of me so naturally. I think it was just all these thoughts and emotions just built up and just, they were waiting. They were waiting. Yeah. They needed to be yeah. on paper. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but that's just, that's how it happened. It was yeah. just very natural and fluid. And I feel like there's, I learned that there's a lot of beauty and chaos mm-hmm. and there's so much beauty in being vulnerable and just really sharing your story and sharing how you feel. Absolutely. Like when you, when you started journaling was like, when you started journaling in those two days, did you kind of already know that this was like chocolate affirmations of what you were trying to do or was it, or, or when did that process come mm-hmm. to when it was like, this is what you wanted to do with it? I didn't know. I I was this close to not even publishing it all, publishing it at all. I was just going to yeah. keep it to myself, honestly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I really was not going to share it with the world. I slept on it for a long time. So mm-hmm. I wrote it in two days and then I didn't, that was in 20, that was in 2020. Oh, wow. So yeah. yeah. I published it last year in 2022. Um, um, yeah. So really, yeah, that? really had a time. Yeah. I had a really had a time to sit, sit on it. I mean, yeah. and it's good that you mm-hmm. ke- keep that. Cause I know that there's been times where I've, I've, I've never really journaled too much in my life. Uh, but like the times that I have journaled, sometimes I never kept those, kept those things. Like, like if I've written it down, like ma- mainly I kind of write in my like phone or my iPad or on the laptop, whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah. there's been times where I journaled and I just never kept them. And I don't know, really remember why. Maybe it's just like, maybe I thought that those thoughts weren't like at the time I thought maybe those thoughts weren't valid to me or valid to whoever else could maybe see them. Cause I've, mm-hmm. I've somewhat had ideas of like putting all the different notes of things that I've created and like putting them in like a, like a scrapbook of sorts, like with photos and kind of, you know, like photos that would kind of relate to the certain emotions or things that I've, you know, you know, created at that time. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I like it, it takes time to really decide of, you know, like to what you want to do with those works. And as you said, you said that your mom had kind of said that that's like you should put it out because there's people that probably feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, whatnot. I mean, have you with the book, uh, what was your what what was the like the I guess the the main uh, what did you accomplish? What have you accomplished with it? Like, have have you gotten people to kind of like reach out to you, I guess, and tell you about their stories and and kind of like, like say to you like, Hey, Leah, I really relate to you. And like, your book has really helped me through a certain kind of, uh, situation that I was going through a certain kind of emotion of feeling like what, Mm -hmm. I guess, what has, what, what have you experienced post the release of the book? Mm, I've connected with a lot of people who have also shared their passion for writing and their passion for sharing their story. Um, Mm -hmm. But they've always, you know, maybe, been afraid of the vulnerability or just maybe they didn't know how to start. And I, that's what I want. You know, I wanted to build a community. I wanted to, I wanted to create a safe place so that people could feel understood so that they could feel that they were important. Their message was important and valid. Um, So that's a lot of the feedback that I've gotten so far is just that, you know, they really, they feel seen and it's encouraged them to also step out and share their personal stories. Yeah, that's great. And I think that's, that's so important too, right? Is just, I think every, I believe that everybody has a story to tell, right? And I think mm-hmm. uh, not, not everybody, everybody has a story to tell, but not everybody's willing or able to like share that story, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that goes to, once again, just the fear, right? People are are very scared to be vulnerable, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, for you, yeah. I guess, would you say that this has been a moment or if, if not this moment, but what was the moment where you could kind of realize like where you're, where with your vulnerability that you felt like, I guess the most powerful, Mm. like, was there a certain kind of moment maybe during this creation or maybe 
or prior to that, was there something that like led you to be like, you know what, I bet this is the most vulnerable I could be. And I feel the most powerful in this moment. Like, I don't, you like, you don't feel ashamed. You don't feel any sort of guilt. Like you just Mm -hmm. feel stronger from this, from opening yourself up to yourself, to others, whatever Mm -hmm. it may be. Yeah, I feel like writing this book was definitely has definitely been one of the most impactful experiences in my life, just because I write in the book, there's a phrase that says your truth will set you free. There's something about sharing how you feel. There's something about divulging your truth that really takes a huge weight off of your shoulders Yeah, because you know, like a lot of us are just, we're just stuck in our own thoughts and emotions all the time. And we don't talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. We keep it inside. Once you release that, it's just such a freeing feeling. It's a freeing feeling to share, you know, really what's going on in your mind and, you know, sharing your story, especially with, with the world, because, you know, once it's out there, it's out there. Like I, It's out there. Out and I'm there. at the point where I don't feel like, you know, I feel like I've said a lot that I want to say in the book and I'm not, and I'm proud of it. Before, as I was writing, as I was journaling, you know, I was feeling all these different emotions and I hadn't quite processed what I was feeling. But looking mm-hmm. back, you know, reading through the book as many times as I did, it's just like, I really want to empower people to accept themselves and love yeah. themselves for who they are, no matter what. Absolutely. And and that's very important what you said about like, sometimes when we write these things, we haven't fully processed, processed Mm -hmm. it. And I understand that because like, you know, there's definitely like, I'm, I'm kind of in that space in my creative, uh, environment, my creative environment, just creative space. And as of now, um, you know, uh, I am creating a couple stories that are very vulnerable to to me. Like I'm not, mm-hmm. it's almost like I'm putting myself in the in the front in the driver's seat of these of these movies in terms of like narratively, in terms of the character, um, and that just goes to me actually acting in these next couple projects that I that I'm in, but or that I'm creating. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, once you put it out there, it's out there. And at the end of the day, like the idea is to I think for me, and I'm sure this is the same thing for you, like the idea is to when you put that out there, that it just, like you said, the truth, that thing, it will set you free. You feel free from it. You don't feel bound down by that, like by that Mm -hmm. emotion that you felt, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, like you also could think of like who who else it might help. You know what I mean? There's definitely somebody that it might help, you know, because the world is a big place and, Mm -hmm. you know, everybody, everybody has these different kinds of traumas to go through. And, and sometimes, you know, we find it surprising or, you know, that a lot of the folks might be going through some of the same sort of situations. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's amazing that once again, like you just found the vulnerability to, to open up and to create just an awesome piece of work. And once again, I do want to buy it immediately. I actually would like to put it. I have a, I have a, I have a script that I'm writing. It's, it's a, it's a horror film. But it's it it deals a lot of it deals a lot with like the like you've probably seen Get Out. It deals a lot with yeah. some of that yeah. situations, and um, mm-hmm. it would be there. I, I'm as I'm writing it right now, and I'm and I'm kind of seeing where I could probably place that in because it's we'll just say it's a very psychological uh, kind of movie in a way. Ooh, sounds good. Can we? We'll, just have see to, it? we'll have to talk about that for sure. But um, one of my last questions here is uh, I want to go back to Fort Wayne for a second. Um, mm-hmm. you, did you grow up in Fort Wayne? Mm-mm. No. Wait, so you're not, or did you grow up in Indiana? Yes. Okay, cool. But not in the Fort Wayne area. I guess what, what brought you into the Fort Wayne area? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I do have, fam- I, my family's here. Yeah. Uh, my family's here. It's not a permanent home. I know that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but it's. It's for right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Where would you where would you see yourself at, I guess, in the future? Anywhere. Somewhere warm, yeah. maybe. Somewhere warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Has there a place that you've been and visited to and like done work in that you like have enjoyed the most? Mm-hmm. I think California is amazing. Um, I love California. I love New York and I love Miami. I think those are my top three mm-hmm. cities. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've been to 
every one of those places besides New York City. I've never been in New York. I've been in New York, but not not the city. Yeah. I was I was like near Niagara Falls when I was over there. Um yeah. Which Gotta is very go. different, <laughs> very different from Gotta upstate, <laughs> you know. But uh, Miami's Miami's definitely cool. There's definitely like a, a pretty big fitness boom over there. I've noticed. Um, yeah. I just remember visiting Miami when I was when I was out there for school, and Miami mm-hmm. definitely is is a, is a wild spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and California is great, you know. Like the mm-hmm. bay is the bay is really cool. Um, it's not as warm as people think <laughs> for sure. It's definitely pretty cold, but yeah, um, yeah, it's something. Okay, so what is next for Leah Love and Life with Leah and Chocolate Affirmations? What is next with yeah. with everything that you've built? Like, what is what is your plan moving forward? Oh, my plan. I have I have a lot of plans. Um, my goal with the book is really just to build a strong community. I want people to feel seen. I want people to feel heard and accepted. Um, so I would really like to build a huge community so that we can, you know, talk about our experiences together. I feel yeah. like the older I get, I realize it's really hard to build meaningful connections, especially with women. Um, it's it's really hard because I think a lot of people get in the mindset of they see people as com- as competition and not as necessarily a friend or someone yeah. they can have a good conversation with. And I really want to change that narrative. I want, I really just want to create a place where people can come together and, you know, share how they feel and just feel encouraged to become whatever they've always wanted to become for themselves. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the goal of my book. And then I'm in the process of writing a second one. Um, yes. So it's going to be a trilogy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love to hear that trilogy. Yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. So I won't share the topic of the second book yet, but it does have to do something with my pen name, Leah Love. So okay, yeah. Goes into yes. that a little bit. Um yeah. as far as fitness and health and wellness, just um can continue to be a leader in the space and yeah. um continuing to make a difference and work with larger companies and brands and just continue to help and inspire people. Yeah. There you go. I love that. I love that. Well, Leah, I, I, once again, I appreciate you being on the podcast. Um, this is amazing conversation. I always love seeing the stuff that you've done and it's just, it's just incredible. And, and of course I'm there to continue supporting um and of course you know building building more of a collaboration too into the future with what stuff you that you know that you do with your career and just the trilogy now like i'm excited for it all so where can Thank people you. uh find your social medias where can people reach out to you at list them all yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, so I have a few different um, Instagram pages. Life with Leah Fitness is my main page. It's all things health, fitness, and wellness. Has some um, modeling things in there as well, some brand collaborations. And then Chocolate Affirmations is the Instagram handle for my book. Um, and then I also am on Facebook with my book and then my fitness page. Awesome. Well, everybody who's listening and watching, please go pick up at Chocolate Affirmations. It'll be in the links. Go follow all of her social medias, please. And thank you. And uh, once again, Leah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Appreciate yeah. you. Um, before we go, actually, there's two two questions. Actually, there's two more questions I wanted to ask. Quick one. Yeah. You also, you also kind of, you were connected to Jalen Smith, who I know a lot of people know in terms of uh you know being in the NFL uh, a football star from Fort Wayne Indiana how did how did that connection come to be by the way yeah so i was the um uh, manager and operator of iCryo which is yeah. um kind of like a health and wellness center cryotherapy mm-hmm. and some also, some other awesome services too check it out um mm-hmm. i actually um connected well i applied i applied mm-hmm. for the job um, just because I really, really wanted to get into that space of yeah. health and wellness. And there's mm-hmm. just so many cool like services that people aren't aware of, like cryotherapy and compression yeah. therapy and, you know, IVs and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, a huge part of what I love to do is educate people on, you know, things that they should be trying and yeah. then also just, you know, helping people on their journey. So it really just made sense. Yeah. And it really just aligned with everything I was doing. And, you know, I just have a huge passion for meeting people and, mm-hmm. you know, connecting with people and help, helping lead them 
yeah. you know, to the healthy things for them. So that's kind of how that came about. That's awesome. Cause I've definitely seen, I definitely, I think I may have seen a picture of y'all together. I've seen like just the, I've never been to the I cryo whenever I've gone over that way. I've definitely seen yeah. it. And I've seen a lot of people talk about it. And I've actually wanted to try cryotherapy too. Um, you should. Even, it's it's yeah. so good for you. Yeah. That's what I've heard. And especially like there's, there's another kind of uh, thing like that. It's not exactly cryotherapy. I think it's just called like float tank therapy. I've wanted to try that as well. Um, they got a couple of those places yeah. around in the Bay and I'm, I was, yeah, one of these days I'm gonna have to go back towards that way and try it out. Um, my second question, and usually my last question I usually ask people is like, usually what kind of advice or what kind of, uh, uh, advice would you give to people that were, that is in your situation or that were in your situation in terms of like starting mm -hmm. from fitness and, you know, maybe not, you know, reaching a goal that they wanted to and kind of had to switch mm -hmm. up but I kind of want to change up this approach. I want it to be what from your book, what from chocolate affirmations would you want to leave as advice for any, uh, any young black woman who is listening to this podcast right now, what would be the best advice? One of the, one of your favorite pieces from the book that you would want to give to them. Mm, definitely. Uh, so there's a piece in my book that says, you know, the world doesn't want you in your raw God given form. The world prefers you lighter and processed and all the things that you're not, you know, but that's that's not who you are. You're raw. You're real. You're undone. Basically, mm -hmm. meaning the world wants yeah. to see you as a certain way. The world may want to see you in the entertainment um, business. The world might want to see you as a certain skin tone. The world may want right. you to be all these things that are maybe processed or fake and that you're really not. Um, mm -hmm. But none of that really matters. You just need to be who you are and you just need to strive in who you are, take ownership of that and love yourself for that. That's beautiful. I love that. Yes, we go. We go. We go. Use that for the for the advice. Absolutely. I love that. Leah. That's great. Um, yes. Once again, thank you so much for being on the podcast and yeah. thank you to everyone who's listening and watching. Please make sure to follow the excellent podcast everywhere that there is. And also make sure to go visit www.swfilmsproduction.com because the website is live. And uh, once again, thank you so much Leah, for being on here. Yeah. Thanks for having me.